Hi, this is the Knitting Annie podcast, episode 10. I haven't seen you in a long time. So I am your very uncomfortable host, Knitting Annie. You can find me on Instagram as Knitting Annie. I'm infrequently on Ravelry as The Knitting Annie. I have a sort of defunct website, knittingannie.com, which hopefully will be reinstated by the time this is over. And that's just about it. I am super uncomfortable right now because I haven't done this in so long. And hopefully this will be the first take I do and I don't feel so uncomfortable that I stop it and start all over again. Hopefully I'll also remember to look there and not over here. It's kind of weird. Okay, I'm back. And um, hopefully I won't ramble too much. I'm going to try and get back on the horse and do some more of these for you. I wanted to say thank you to everybody who's reached out to me to ask me to start up again. You've been very encouraging and thank you for your support. And thank you for watching. If this is your first podcast, welcome. Maybe you want to check out the others so you can see me when I'm not so awkward. <laughs> so I put a few things together for you. A lot has happened in the past seven months and um, a lot of fibery things have happened, some exciting things have happened, and I'll show you some, some things that I've recently spun. I'll show you some knitting that I've finished, some things that I hope to work on, and we'll just talk. If you guys ever have any questions about spinning or fibery things, please feel free to reach out to me. You can email me, um, contact me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram probably more than everything else. I'm not on Ravelry all that much. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So why don't I just catch you guys up a little bit on some life things. I'm very happy to report that we can move out of this place that we're in. Um, my One of my neighbors has very young children and they were screaming earlier, so hopefully we won't hear them. And then another one of my neighbors has been blasting opera music all day, which I guess isn't the worst thing, but hopefully we won't hear much of that either. But in very happy news, we just found out that we were approved to move into a new home where we'll have our own home instead of having very close neighbors. And I can have chickens again. And I'll have a little room where I can have my spinning much as I have now, but I want to make it a little bit prettier than it is. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We could have a garden. I can have fruits and vegetables again. And I can make a butterfly garden, which is very important to both myself and my husband. In case you guys didn't know, the monarch butterfly is having a bit of a tough time, and I'll put some links in the show notes to explain to you what's going on with the monarch butterfly, but they're on huge decline over the past 20 years, and there are little things that you and I can do to help them, and one of which is planting a butterfly-friendly garden where pollinators can come and feed off of your garden, and another thing is to plant milkweed, which is the only thing that the monarch caterpillar caterpillar will eat. So I'll post some links for that. So yeah, very exciting. Um, we're going to be moving, oh gosh, in a month, two months, something like that. My days are kind of mushing together. So that's very exciting. Because of this, I'm going through my fiber room and I'm trying to see what can I spin before we move so that it's not all packed up in boxes? And I think my goal is going to be to wash and prep the fiber that is raw, that's just sitting all over the place. And the things that are in packages, maybe I should just leave alone for now because it'll be easy to transport. But if I get to them, I get to them. I have a bit of an addiction right now with starting many different little projects. So that's what happened with this spinning here, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, in other exciting news, I taught a spinning class at a local yarn shop here in Connecticut, and it went really well. I had three students, one of which um, follows me on Instagram, so if you're watching now, hello. Um, it was a really great class. I was really impressed with them, and it's always amazing to me when I teach someone how to spin, how different everybody is with their progression of learning and their level of learning and what it is that is their strength and what it is that is their weakness. Um, just very interesting. I just really enjoy the process, whether it be me spinning or teaching somebody else to do it. If you happen to live in Connecticut 
and you're interested in learning how to spin, be it on a drop spindle or a wheel, I'm happy to um, talk with you more. I think I prefer teaching at something like a yarn shop because I think it's easier for everybody to meet in that one central location. Um, so I'll post some information again, how to get in touch with me in the notes. Um, I hope to be doing classes not only in spinning, but also preparation of fibers. Um, how to card fibers, be it on a drum carter like that one over there, or on hand cards. Um, I have someone who's interested in a private lesson that's reached out that wants some help with plying. So all of this is very fun to me. And I was talking to my husband about it last night over dinner, and it's not really a big profit maker for me. And I think a lot of people, when you say, oh, I knit or I spin or I crochet, the first thing they say is, oh, you should sell that. But as most of us makers know, we put so much time and effort um, into making something that the expense is so great if we were going to pay ourselves for the amount of hours we work doing it, that it just doesn't pay to sell things. So for me, teaching these classes is, is not as much about making money, although the, the yarn shop um, does charge the students for it and I make a little bit off of that. It's more so for the enjoyment of teaching the class, um, just like the enjoyment for me making something. I don't really sell much of what I, what I make, be it yarn or finished product. Um, I just really enjoy the process. Which kind of leads me down to the next tangent. I was spinning so much for other farmers um, as part of trades or for a nominal amount of pay. Oh, I'm sorry I keep wiping my eye, it's tearing. Um, that it kind of put me off fiber for a little while. I, I think I'm, I'm putting that behind me. So if anybody wants me to spin for them, I'm, I'm pretty much going to turn it down until I guess I catch up with my own things or if I feel the need to do it again. But sometimes when there's so much pressure into making something under a deadline, Hi, what do you want? Watson's here. I think he wants an early dinner, but that's not going to happen. Um, so when there's pressure making something, it's just not as enjoyable for me. So I'm going to put that on hold and just kind of spin for myself right now. Ruby's here too. <laughs> the family's all here. Hi, Ruby. Do you want to say hi or no? No, I don't think she's going to jump up here. The puppies are doing well. Little sausages they are. My rabbit's doing well. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see some pictures of him up there too. So why don't I just get into showing you what I've been spinning, and then hopefully um, on the next few podcasts we'll get into some sort of, I don't know, outline, regularity, answering of questions, things that you guys might want to know. I'm so incredibly touched to learn that I'm inspiring some of you guys to spin. I think that's really an honor that um, I could do that for you. And if you have any questions or you want to share anything, please let me know. I'm happy to talk about it. So, here are a few yarns that I've spun recently. I'm really trying to do my best to uh, spin a little bit thicker. I think as you progress in spinning, you want to spin thinner and thinner. Um, and it becomes harder to spin a consistent yarn that's also thick. I will not pause this to look in the mirror and see what's going on with my eye because <laughs> I might not come back and I want to stay here. So anyway, this was a blend that I got from Black Sheep Wool or Black Sheep Yarn, Black Sheep Shop. It's in Kent, Connecticut. If you're in Connecticut and you want to take a drive somewhere, Kent is absolutely gorgeous. There are really cute little shops and um, it's very artsy. It's kind of like high-end crunchy granola, which I like to say. Um, there's also Kent Falls where you can see the waterfalls there. Don't don't think it's like massive Niagara Falls. It's not. It's like a beautiful little waterfall. Um, you can have a little picnic there. And there's a great yarn shop and a very, very nice woman who owns that, that yarn shop. She's incredibly passionate about what she does. And she had this fiber. It's by a local woman. I'll put it in the show notes. I can't remember. Very lovely, although it did bleed quite a bit when I was washing it. Anything that's blue, I find, tends to do that, so I wasn't terribly upset. It took um, three or four washes to get the water to run clear, which, again, I'm not really upset about. It happens, and 
the water eventually did run clear, which is good. If it didn't, then I would have had to really heat it and set it again using probably some citric acid. But it worked out well. It's a, a mixture of mohair, alpaca, merino, angelina, and I don't know what else. I spun it long draw, woolen style, and you can see all the variation in the color. It sounds like Watson and Ruby are um, wrestling in the living room, so if you hear them, please don't mind. <laughs> the next thing is straight alpaca, which I'm not really used to spinning. I really prefer spinning wool over alpaca, but this was also spun woolen. I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. Um, this was some alpaca roving that I received as part of a trade from one of those farmers that I was spinning for. I don't know what possessed me. All of a sudden I just grabbed it and said, I have to finish this. I have to spin it. Done. So this was what was left of it and that's what I got. And this, some of you guys probably saw on my Instagram as a single, is a really, really, really cool bat. I actually took a little video of it opened up. It looked much more pink in that video, I think, than what it is. It, it kind of turned out more purple. This is from, now you can hear Watson's squeaky toy. He's really upset that I'm in here not paying him any attention. This is from Fat Cat Knits, and I got this from one of the Connecticut Fiber Festivals, I think. She's out of New York. And is this from that one? So this is BFL, Paulworth, Angelina, Silk Noils and Thread, Milk Fiber, and Something Silk. What I love about it is the very tweedy effect from all of these little silk chunks. You can see one right there. You can see one there. This hasn't been set yet, so I haven't washed it. Once I wash it, it'll bloom and probably get a little bit fatter and squishier. I also have from her, which I'm really excited about spinning, um, do I have it with me? Oh, I do. The last picture I posted on my Instagram was my Ashford, and today I'm so excited because I ordered an Ashford kit so I could get my wheel running again because the drive band broke and the tension band broke. Um, so I got that running again, and I took a picture of a multicolor single there, so you can see that on Instagram, but this is the fiber. I don't know what's in it, but it's also this fat cat knits. It's got a lot of sheen. I think it's probably BFL and silk. I don't normally prefer top. Um, I think I like spinning from bats better for some reason, but it's coming out nice. I also got from her this awesome bat that I think I'm going to keep in this gradient colorway. Meaning when I make the yarn, it'll stay purple and then go into this teal and then go into the green and gold, etc. You can see all the little bits of silk here. So it'll make it kind of like that, kind of like this yarn. Watson, what are you doing? You're making so much noise. <laughs> You're making so much noise. You have to stop. I'm filming something very important. And when I had my class, I brought with me all of these little samples of fiber. I don't know if I was more excited about this than the students, but they seemed to, to really enjoy it. I have such a collection of fiber that it might be difficult for somebody to see that many individual breeds or colors or types in one place. Um, some of you might be going to Rhinebeck this weekend. I hope you have an awesome time. I'm a little bit jealous. I'm not going to be going. I have to be good right now and not spend a ton of money because, again, we are going to be moving and I have amassed quite a collection. But this is some washed mohair. Mohair is goat. Purely. 
Oh, and this is what I have washing right now. So I have some of it soaking as we speak. But this is some Black Romney. I've showed you guys this before in a, in a very old, long ago podcast. And this is a little sample of it that I had spun. Probably hard for you to see because the yarn is so dark. But this would make such a beautiful sweater. I have half the fleece right there sitting beside me in a bag on the floor. And hopefully it will be on one of my racks over here by the end of the day once it's washed. And then, just because it's so cool, not because of any other reason, I have these three blue face luster. And they all look so different from one another. These are all from different sheep. Watson and Ruby, stop. Stop squeaking. <laughs> they were quiet all day, I swear. But all from different sheep. And you can see all the different texture. This one was a little bit older. This one's a little bit younger. And this one is also a very young sheep. So if you have any questions about spinning or fiber, again, please let me know so I know what to talk about next time. In knitting news, I made another sock head hat. I love these hats. This is such an easy pattern. It's something that you don't need to memorize. It's kind of cut and dry, and it uses up sock yarn that you have just sitting around, or cool sock yarn that you don't want to necessarily waste on your feet and you want on your head so everybody can see it. Isn't this stitch marker cute? I made that. It's a little flower. It'll come off. <laughs> Isn't that cool too, what it did at the top, the yarn? This is Yarns to Remember, which is a yarn that's dyed here in Connecticut by one of the owners of Knit and Pearls in Avon, Connecticut. I really love her yarn. She has such great color scents and she's very careful to make sure that the yarns don't bleed when they're washed. But look at that little green pooling here and that green pooling up there. I thought that was so cool. But I love this hat. This is the third one that I've made. So you can wear it kind of floppy in the back or you can go like that and make it <laughs> Smaller. I like it floppy better. You get the picture. So, I have more works in progress right now than I want to admit to you. Oh my, what happened here? I have sweater on the needles for me. I have never actually completed a sweater. I've come close a couple times. I don't know what happens. I get kind of bored or scared. I don't know. So I have almost a full back of a sweater for me, which hopefully I'll make some progress on. I've got a few pairs of socks on the needles and another hat, a couple other things. Maybe as we go along, I'll show you, but I'm, I'm kind of um, bashful to show you if I'm not planning on making much progress on it. Again, with the pressure, I can't have pressure. <laughs> Another thing I was working on, but I think I'm going to rip it out and save this yarn for weaving. This is Noro, and I was going to make another sock head hat. It's a good thing to take along with you when you're traveling, because it's easy to knit this in the car. I just, I don't know. I'm not a big Noro fan, I guess. And I don't know if it's the way it feels, and I know it, it washes up really nice and it gets softer when you wash it. But there's something very plant fibery feeling about it. And I think I prefer the woolly feeling. And also, I'm not really in love with these colors because I didn't realize that the colors change so quickly um, and that there's so many different colors in one ball. So when I first looked at it, these are the only colors I had seen on it. You know, that's, that's what was around the outside. And I guess I didn't pay very, very good attention when I was buying it because then it changes and on the inside the colors change to be a much darker 
series. And while all the colors are very pretty, I don't necessarily love them together. And also, am I saying also a lot? Also, it seems to knit up much more loose than I had anticipated. So I think it'll not keep its shape very well. And I think it's kind of too, I don't know, it's lacking some sort of memory. But I do think it would be nice to weave with. So I have a feeling I'm going to rip this out and, and do that. In other exciting news, I had a great mail day today because I got um, a loom that I purchased from a lady on Facebook who was in one of my fiber groups and it was $60 and it's a rigid heddle loom. The only thing, it's missing one of the knobs on the side. So when Brad comes home today, I'm going to see if he can fashion me a knob so I can use it right away. Otherwise, I can buy it um, from the manufacturer and I'm sure it's not going to be very expensive, but that's very exciting. And recently, I also participated in um, a yarn crawl with the, the knitting shops here in Connecticut. And there are a lot of knitting shops, but these particular shops belong to, I don't know if you want to say their own guild or organization, but this is all of the yarn that I bought. Well, a couple of the ones in here, they gave me for free or I won, but this was the Western Connecticut Yarn Council Fiber Friends and Fun Yarn Crawl. And it was with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shops here in Connecticut. And I did it on a Friday and on a Sunday. One day I did it with Brad, like on the Sunday he came with me. And then on the Friday, I went by myself to a few of those shops. And something very cool that they do, they give you this passport. which is right here. I've never done this, um, but in this particular passport this year, there were recipes that they gave you from each shop along with, you know, what each shop carries, things like that. And you bought the passport for $5. Inside there were coupons, which some of these coupons are really good, like 20% off, which is gonna be really awesome if you're making a big project. I'm saying you, me. I'm gonna use this coupon, don't tell Brad. <laughs> but I'll be saving him money though, right? So it's good. But every time you go to one of the, the shops, they, you know, knock off their shop on the passport. And then when you complete this at the end, you're entered into one grand prize drawing. But each shop had their own mini drawings. And I happened to win in two shops. One of the ones in Kent. I haven't been back there to get my prize. Hopefully I'll go soon. Um, and I won at Knit and Pearls in Avon. And a couple of the other shops gave me some freebies. So this... Sorry for the crinkle. This is a very pretty wool yarn homestead from Plymouth that the shop in Westport gave me for free. This yarn was from Nancy O. This was free too. I'm not like in love with this. It's some sort of acrylic blend. And the yarn's kind of weird. But it was free! Free yarn! Awesome! Maybe I'll just knit with it just to get it out of the way. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And I don't even want to tell you because it's... Um, oh! This was from Knit and Pearls and Avon too. It's such a pretty yarn and I'm not really familiar with knitting with cotton. Like straight up cotton. But this is El Rey prints in cotton. And it came with a Susie Rogers reading mitts pattern, which of course I already have. I've already made them. I love them. I don't quite know how the cotton would turn out with that pattern though. So I might use this for something else. But I love those colors. And I'm not going to go through this whole bag to show you everything in here. But the intention of buying all of this yarn Okay, there are many, many balls and skeins and whatever in here. I am going to be making that cute hat that came out free that most of you had seen on Facebook. Are you at all following anything yarn related on Facebook? Because it popped up a million times. So, what was it called? Shetland, Shetland wool something. I'll link it in the show notes, but it's a pattern, 
a free pattern that came out, Shetland Wool Week, okay? A free pattern came out with a hat and it has all of these little sheep on, on the front. Actually, I think it goes around the whole hat. So all of these little sheep and you, the, the one that I had seen were like a bunch of white sheep and then one little black sheep in the flock. And it was a multicolor hat and I thought it was just the cutest thing. So anyway, I'm kind of like going off on many tangents. So my intention to going to all of these yarn shops was to get a couple skeins from each shop and at the end I would have one project made from all of the yarn from all of their shops. So as you can see, I got a lot of yarn. I can make many hats. And another thing that they do, if you do buy yarn in each of their shops and you make one project from all of this yarn that you bought, so it's like one project from all these little places, you can enter it to win something in January. They do a charity event and you bring these knits and you put them on display and you enter them to win. So I think that'll be very cool too and hopefully I'll get this done before then so that I can submit it. Anyway, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. When I leave you guys, I'm going to hopefully upload this very quickly, put it out there, and make another one soon. I'm off from work for like the next three or four days, and you know, maybe I'll get some more together to show you guys around the same time next week. Please, please, if you have any questions, let me know. I need something to talk about. And I'll show you some more finished projects. I'll show you some more yarn that I've spun. And we'll keep in touch. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And hopefully I will see you soon. Bye.